So we're gonna deal with that today. Hey, Jay. Jay. Mm. Jay. What? We got work to do. Yeah. I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II, recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the Tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. All right, so this is Nick's computer. Uh, he asked me the other day if I knew why he was getting a SMART failure. And SMART, if you guys aren't aware, stands for Self-Monitoring Analysis Reporting Technology, which I'm not sure which came first, the acronym or the sentence, but either way, basically uh, all hard drives, SSDs, NVMEs, uh, any modern drive built in the last like while is gonna have SMART technology built in, which is checking a lot of different uh, factors of the drive to tell you what the drive health is. It's monitoring things like temperatures, it's monitoring errors, it's doing all sorts of analyzing so that it can warn you when something is about to fail in your drive, which is exactly the warning that we're seeing right here. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to show you how to get past this error if this is your only drive or it happens to be your operating system drive, which it is for Nick, right? I mean, if you didn't know how to get past this, uh, you'd be stuck because all it's gonna allow you to do is go into your BIOS and then you're gonna restart and then get this warning again and be taken right back to your BIOS. You can't bypass it from this particular menu. So today we're gonna talk about uh, how to bypass it. We're going to show you some utilities and stuff to try and find out exactly what's failing in your drive. And then uh, we'll show you, uh, I guess, how to fix it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, you can see we've got four drives installed here. One of them is an NVMe, which is a thousand gigabyte uh, NVMe right there in M.2. Uh, we've got the Kingston 240G right there, which is actually his operating drive, or his operating system drive. Uh, this is a regular hard drive, and then he's got a one, a one terabyte SanDisk SSD. But you see the one that's failing here is the Kingston A240G. So first things first, you're going to want to back up everything that, that's important. And to do that, if it's your operating system drive, you need to get into the operating system. Now this is an ASUS BIOS right here, but what I'm about to show you will apply to every single BIOS, uh, regardless of the brand, whether it's ASRock, MSI, ASUS, doesn't matter. So if we go over here to boot, you'll see it here, this is where all the boot options and stuff are. But if we take a look at boot override, here's all four of our drives right here. So we want to manually force it to boot to the Kingston 240 gigabyte SSD. Now the reason why this doesn't just bring up the error again is the drive reports during the post or the power on self test or yeah, power on self test where it's saying, hey, I've got a problem. And then the BIOS is going, hey, this thing says it has a problem, you should handle it. Once you override it here, it's past that point and it will then just immediately load the bootloader off the drive, which is then gonna boot into Windows. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna get in here. You can see the operating system is gonna start up. And it's funny because this error may show up long before you ever notice any sort of issue with your system. Uh, in fact, Nick has never seen this, this, this drive give any sort of weird corruption errors, no sort of strange blue screens where the codes correspond to some sort of a drive problem, no issues whatsoever, with the exception of the fact that the smart or self-monitoring analysis reporting technology came back and it's, I just think it's a really sim silly acronym, uh, says, hey, something's wrong here. Now to understand the reason why this might be popping up, SSDs are made up of a bunch of different NANs or uh, chips, right, which are storage, that are all controlled by a controller to basically make an array that looks like a single storage capacity. Now inside that drive is going to be a bunch of different chips that are storing information. Now the controller is responsible for constantly moving the data around the drive so that it stays healthy. Unlike a spinning platter SSD or SSD hard drive, it's not written to a specific spot and has to stay there. Because the transfer speed amongst the chips is so fast, it's gonna constantly read, erase, then, and then write to a different part of the drive all the time. That way all of the drive is being recycled and used constantly, that way it all stays within the same health. If you didn't do that, you would find various parts of the drive would start failing before other parts. So it's think of it as a uh, balancing of the drive. 
So what ends up happening is over time, if some of that starts reporting, hey, we've got an error here, or we're not, we're, we're seeing some problems, it'll report back in the smart um, functionality. So now that Nick has already backed everything up on his system here, which he backed it up into another drive, you can see we have other drives here, it kind of shows the, the importance of either having one scheduled backups or images of your drives, which is basically where it takes a copy of a drive and just makes another drive out of it for redundant backup. This is very important for things like workstations, uh, school computers, if you're not backing up any of your important documents or assignments or any of that stuff on the cloud. If you don't have another drive, this is your only drive in your system, I would highly recommend you just start a Google account, maybe pay the couple of bucks a month it is to expand the storage, but you get at least four gigabytes of storage with a basic free account and start putting your important documents up there, things that are absolutely irreplaceable, that are important, especially documents that could fit a ton of documents of four gigabytes. Uh, same thing with pictures and stuff like that. At least move them there to get them going and backed up as soon as possible because you never know when the drive is going to actually fail. It is warning you that it is imminent. If we come into this computer, you can see he's got one drive here that's really, really full. This is actually quite unhealthy for an SSD. One, I explained how it's going to constantly move the data around to different parts of the drive. Now, if you, ha if you don't run your drive to full capacity, it gives it more room to kind of move things around and then start rearranging the bytes and the bits and where they land on the drive. The more full the drive is, the less it can do that. He also has a power supply that's being really stupid. Stuff like this doesn't exactly help the uh, drive health either though. So as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted and did the world's fastest power supply swap right now. This is a problem. If you're seeing red because you're under 10% of the drive available, which is when it turns red, by the way, you need to expand your storage or add another drive or move it to a bigger drive. So we wanna see what's actually failing on the drive because it can tell us what's happening. Smart is actually smart enough to tell you what's failing, not just is failing, true, which is what you get when you do like the command prompt. Uh, you know, there's, there's a command prompt string you put in here to pull smart and be like, hey, are you failing? And it's like, yes. <laughs> and that's all you get. It'd be nice to know what's failing on there. So we are gonna use from Passmark, uh, a, a program called Passmark Disk Checkup version 3.5. And we can talk to the drives and see what's happening with the smart drives. So let's go and look at our Kingston drive right here. If you click it, you can see right here, status, warning, one or more smart thresholds exceeded. Now it's referring to the threshold, which is saying, here is the exceptional range in which this data should stay within. If it exceeds that threshold, that means something is failing. And that threshold could be the amount of hours run or the amount of read writes or the amount of errors, all that sort of stuff. So if we look over here and we move from device info to smart info, you can see right here, it tells us raw read uh, error rate. Okay, 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 all this is okay, but then fail. E7, SSD life left, fail. Threshold is one. Well, technically the raw value is one, the worst is one, and then our threshold is 10. You can kind of think of that as percentage of life, if you will. If 100% is fully healthy, Nick is 99% unhealthy right now. But here's something else worth, look at this raw read error rate. This number has been going up all day long. It, is, it has gone up quite a bit, even just since earlier today. On the fly ECC, uncorrectable error count. 7.297 million times. I think each byte of data that's error, is, it's considered a, a number there. So, but the point is we're seeing lots of errors on this drive, and that's probably because of the health of the drive right now. And you can see the SSC soft correction. Of course, this is going to correlate with the other errors. So that number, that number, that number, and this number all match. They're all related to errors. So if you want to see what a good drive looks like, here's his SanDisk SSD, which is a one gigabyte or one terabyte that he's added more recently. You can see we've got no failures on here. Our lifespan and such is all sitting here at uh, 100. 29C on the temperature. We don't have bajillions of errors sitting here. So Nick, it's time to change his drive. Okay. But you're lucky. Do you know, do you know why you're lucky? Why am I lucky? Because Crucial is now one of our sponsors. So we got a, quite a few different drives here from Crucial. We got some MX500s, which are two and a half inch SATA drives, uh, just like you have in there. We've got the BX500s, which are 480 gigabytes. We've got a whole bunch of P5s. These are M.2 drives. So these are one terabyte M.2s. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six more of the two terabyte NVMEs. And then we've got a two terabyte, two and a half inch MX500 solid state drive. So I'm gonna give you a two terabyte drive 
because the 400 or excuse me, the 240 gig, it's kind of sad. So what we're gonna do now that he has everything backed up, we're gonna go ahead and get the operating system installed on our crucial drive. And then uh, we'll take a look at the smart status on that. All right, so the worst part about having to do this so far is the fact that you're starting with a clean OS install, which I guess is probably not the worst part because it's gonna be the fastest the OS has ever been until things start to really sort of clutter it up. So you gotta get all your games and stuff reinstalled. Fortunately, Nick has those sitting on a separate drive, so all he has to do is repoint them to those games when he installs the, the launchers for those particular titles. But now if we take a look at our CT2000MX500, check this out, status okay. We like seeing that, don't we? Smart info, check this out, everything is perfect. Right, because of the fact that it's a brand new drive. So all values are 100 where they should be. Smart is a, it's a nice function built into hard drives and SSDs now so that you can at least predict a failure when it's coming. And, and that's just a smart way of doing things, if you will, no, no pun intended. I can tell you as somebody that's grown up with hard drives long before smart technology existed, sometimes you just go to turn it on and suddenly it's just like no OS found or your, your BIOS is just like blinking and going, I don't know, because if the drive just stops working, you have no warning until it stops working. At least with this, you can get a warning, save your data, switch it out with an amazing hard drive like the Crucial MX500 that we put in here and you can be up and running with the inconvenience of having to set up your OS once again, but without the inconvenience of losing very important data, unless you accidentally format it. So once again, a huge thank you to Crucial for supplying uh, plenty of SSDs for us to use here. Nick was like, um, I got this weird smart error thing. And meanwhile, I was like, how am I gonna use all these SSDs? And now it's like, hey, we could either build a crazy RAID array or just give Nick an upgrade because clearly he needs it. 240 gigabytes isn't nearly enough and these are much better, much faster, much more reliable drives. So if you guys wanna learn more about the crucial SSDs that we put in here or the other ones on this table, I'll put a link down in the description below. But if you're seeing the smart error pop up on your screen, don't ignore it. it it's not just, it's not accidental, okay? It's warning you the drive is dying. It's literally on its deathbed saying, please put me out of my misery after you back up. Share this video with someone that you think it might help. If you know anyone that's like, hey, I got this weird smart error popping up on your computer, show them this video. It's important. It's not that hard to deal with. The worst part, like I said, is having to reinstall the OS. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.